In Creo Parametric, you can create assembly models. In the previous two videos, I created the subassembly for the piston and then the assembly for the engine. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple other basic assembly operations like creating an exploded state and also creating a mechanism analysis. So I've got my assembly started out here. If you take a look in the ribbon, there is an exploded view command, and I haven't created a custom exploded view. If I click on this, it will go to the default exploded view, which isn't bad, but I'm going to create my own. I will toggle the exploded view off, and I usually do this directly from the view manager. I will click on the view manager command. Right now I am on the style tab, I will click on the explode tab. We have the default exploded view. There's this other one here. I like to create my own. I will just click the new button. And then you can enter in the name that you want to use. I'm just going to hit the enter key to accept the default name. Now I can go to the edit drop down menu and choose edit position. You can also get to that command from the right mouse button on the name of the exploded state. I will click on edit position and you will get the dashboard for creating the exploded state. All you have to do now is click on a component and then move it where you want it to be. So I'll start off by picking this part and you can see that we get the three arrows in a default location for a dragging direction. I'll hover my mouse over the axis that I want and then just drag the component out a distance. I like that. Then I'll click a different component with the left mouse button and grab this one and move it. And I decide that I want the crankshaft and the pistons to be in the same original place. I'm going to move the engine block. So again, I'll just click on it and move it out over here. Let's grab the engine head and then move it up a bit. And right now I'm just eyeballing it. Beware if you go to the options tab, you could specify an increment if you wanted things to move in sort of like jumps of a certain value, but I'm happy moving these out. And for the two piston assemblies, I'm going to select the subassemblies and the parts together. I'm going to pick them out of the model tree using the control key just so I can get them all moving at the same time. And then let's just grab them and move them up over here. That's good. I'm happy with how this is set up. I will click on the check mark and then you'll notice in the view manager the name of the explode state has a plus sign in parentheses. That means that the explode state has been modified. If I want to capture these changes in the explode state, I will right click on the name and then choose save. And you get a little dialog box. I had also modified the component display of a part. Hey, I can save the style state at the same time. I'll click the OK button. And in that way, I now have my exploded state that I can toggle back and forth from the ribbon. So that's how you do the explode state. Let me turn that off. Now I'm going to create a very simple kinematic mechanisms analysis. To do that, I will first jump into mechanisms mode, which you can get to from the applications tab. And then over here, we have the mechanism command. When I go into mechanism mode, you can see that we have a bunch of symbols on the computer screen indicating the different kinds of connections that we have. I've got some pin connections and some cylinder connections. To start off, I'm going to create a motor in the model. I'm going to locate the join axis that reflects what I want to drive, which is this one here. I will left click on it. And then from the mini toolbar, we have an icon for creating a servo motor. I will click on that and we get the dashboard for defining the motor. That connection axis is the driven entity. If I go to the profile details tab, this is where I can configure the motion that I want. I'm going to drive, not angular position, let's do angular velocity. And just like most engines, this should have 
a constant profile. If you go to the drop down list, you can see some of the other different choices like ramp, cosine, parabolic, table, and so forth. Let me then change the value. I'm going to have this go with only one revolution per second. I know that's on the low side, but I just want to see that. And if you click on the buttons for position and acceleration, you can graph all three quantities on the same chart. Let me close that. Everything looks good for the motor. Let's hit the check mark. And now I'm ready to set up my analysis. I like to go to the analyses line in the mechanism tree and then I can just click on it and then choose the new icon. Now we have the analysis definition dialog box. You can change the name from the type drop down list. I have five different choices. If you just have a basic license of Creo Parametric, you will just have two choices available here to you, position and kinematic. If you also have MDO, the mechanism dynamics option, you'll have the bottom three choices, dynamic analyses, static analyses, and force balance analyses. The default choice is position. That is the old solver from Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. The way that that one worked is that it would calculate the new position of every component at every time step and then try to regenerate the model. I prefer kinematic when I can use it. That is the true kinematic solver. And you can set your start time and end time. I'll have this run for 12 seconds. And then for the frame rate, I usually like to kick this up to at least a value of 24 or 25. That is the number of times per second that calculations will be made. You can choose to lock certain entities. I don't want to do that. And for the initial position of components, you can choose a snapshot if you created one before. But for this kind of assembly, I do not need one. There is a motors tab. Here's that motor that I created, and it's going to run the entire time. You can configure motors to run for only a certain portion of the analysis. This looks good. Let's hit the run button. And there it is spinning around just like it should. And it's complete. Let's click the OK button. Now, if you go to playbacks in the mechanism tree, here is that run. I can use the little play icon from inside of here. That will end up bringing up a dialog box. You can crank up the speed and you can play this over and over again if you want to watch it. One of the more important things from here is the capture button, which you can use for generating an MPEG movie or a different kind of movie file or image file. Let's hit the cancel button out of there and close that. And so that's how you can create the basic mechanism analysis. To get out of mechanism mode, just hit the close button and you'll be prompted if you want to save the playback. I'm not going to save it. Now I'm back in standard assembly mode. So in the course of the past three videos, we've seen how to put an assembly together and also create an explode state and then run a mechanism kinematics analysis. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.